Welcome to El Salvador. We've been curious about this country for quite a few months, and after doing some digging, we found that despite it being the smallest country in Central America, we also found that it contains over 20 volcanoes. This has resulted in an environment that is filled with a stunning array of plants, animals, and not to mention a beautiful dark coastline. But beneath that surface, we did find that El Salvador has faced profound challenges in recent years with many communities severely affected by gang violence. And with the ascent of a new president, Nayib Bukele, and his resolute stance against these gangs, the country does stand at a crossroads. So with everything from the geography to the socio-political situation there, we wanted to let the locals and other travelers guide us for the next five days in the hopes that we could really experience the spirit of El Salvador. We finally made it to El Salvador and to our Airbnb. So the plan for the night, um, we have been recommended by the owners to go to the local market near the stadium to eat some pupusas, which is the traditional Salvadorian food. Uh, we're really keen to taste it and then we're gonna ask some locals I think um, what our day is gonna look like tomorrow. Trying to order here is considerably more difficult than it was in um, Mexico. Just simply because everyone here talks incredibly quickly. So we believe we have ordered four pupus pupusas. So we'll see if see if everything is okay. That was really stressful. Good morning everyone. So we've got some development when it comes to our plan for the day. I sent a message to the owner of the Airbnb to ask her, hmm, what's, what can we do in this country? And she recommended for us to take a bus up west, no, uh, up north to uh, Santa Ana where there's the tallest volcano of the country so we need to take two bus one to the city center i believe and another one to santa ana we booked a bed and breakfast it was like 28 us for two nights with breakfast included but now let's have our own breakfast of the day because we're really hungry unfortunately no local recommendation Very nice mm -hmm. good I believe. Beans are great. Ready to go? Go ahead. The owners are going to take us to the next bus stop, straight to Santana. That's really nice. Really, really nice. Oh, I told them yes. Watch us, guys. Yes. Really cheap. Santa Ana, here we go. We made it to Santa Ana. We're one street away, I think, of our bed and breakfast. Bus is here or inside? In the right one. There's a doorbell just there. Huh? There's a doorbell just there. Just there. Is yeah. it the doorbell? <laughs> yes, it is. Buenas, hola, ¿cómo está? Buenas, buenas tardes. After checking into our bed and breakfast, we actually had a conversation with a bloke that's been in the area for, I think he's said a couple, like, a couple of weeks actually. Um, he's, gave, he's given us some recommendations for other places around El Salvador, um, but he did say to go visit the, the centre, so 
We're gonna go visit the center and check out what's there. Nothing quite screams tourist than holding a camera in front of your face while you walk through a new city. Alrighty, so it is currently 7.30 in the morning. We are making our way to a bus stop that we think we know where it is. It only leaves once a day, so fingers crossed we do find it, because otherwise we miss out. But we're looking to climb a volcano today as per recommendations around, so it should be a bloody good day at this point. It's just really hot. So we think we found the stop. However, the bus hasn't rocked up at the approximated time yet. We've got another 15, we've got another 15 minutes, I know. Another 15 minutes of possible window for this bus to come in, but um, we have made friends on this journey, so they might pop up a little bit in the video, but... Um... Okay, let's go. So after about, I think it was almost, what's that, an hour 45 on the bus, we made it to the start of the trek. Just had a quick chat, uh, a quick presentation from the guide. Everything was in Spanish, so no idea. But um, I believe it's just got to keep kind of quiet, respect the area. It's a six dollar entry fee per person, and then oh no, no, it's nine dollars in total. It's nine dollars in total. Fine. It's three dollars for the guide, six dollars to enter. really humid really really humid but it's really cool because we can't see anything i would say that the only downside when you come here as a tourist um you come here with the big big group um and we're at least i don't know 20 30 walking um but people are really nice you meet a lot of different travelers So we've been hiking for the last, what's that, hour and nine minutes with stops and oh my days, that's a long way down. Whew. Can't even see the bottom yet. Apparently there's also uh, ice creams to grab. Almost like a, a little reward for, for climbing, so not just a view, but you get a treat as well. Super, super stoked to have been recommended this place. The hike up and seeing that lagoon in the middle of a volcano it's unbelievable. It's very humbling actually to sort of see something that large and possibly even that dangerous up close and personal. What a bloody good day. Just surrounded by like volcanoes, like 
Not bad. Not bad. There is something over there, but clouds. I think maybe there are more cars at the end of the road because this is a bit of a dead end. Yeah. Hmm? You have to okay, on, sir. okay. So we found a lift because the bus just left. After hiking the amazing volcano of Santa Ana, we ended up being in Lago Cuatapeque, which is beautiful, as you can see. But the funnest part about today was how we got there. We hitchhiked the first time, then we hitchhiked a second time, and then we took a bus, and then we're here. What an incredible journey. Honestly, this is yeah. traveling to a T. I bloody loved it. It was amazing. Now we're waiting for the bus back to Santa Ana and our day is actually over. So by this time, we had talked to so many people who were telling us you have to go to the beach. So we made our way to El Zonto, which is a small coastal town southeast of the capital, San Salvador, just itching to find out what all the fuss was about. So once we arrived, we immediately dropped all of our stuff in the room before taking ourselves straight to the ocean. And from all the stories, it made total sense as to why we needed to come here. is just amazing first time in black sand and I didn't think it was going to be as magic as it is um, it's beautiful it's like the water is black almost it's like like the water is crystal clear but you couldn't tell because everything's so dark but there's one thing I've learned about surfing it's that if the waves look pretty solid from the shore, it means they're fucking big when you're out there. And so they're really, really big when you're out there. So kudos to those two servers that are out there at the moment. Apparently the swell's supposed to be over upwards of six to eight feet, which is a pretty solid swell for a couple of newbies. Good start to the day though. Bit of a sunrise, bit of a surf, or well, watching the surf and whatever amazing things Sol was saying because I was distracted by the amazing waves, I wasn't entirely listening. Good morning again from El Zonte. Um, we were supposed to leave today, but um, we decided to stay for our last day. We're not going to visit the capital just because we're going to have a really intense month in Chile. Uh, so we're staying another night. We're changing rooms right now. Um, and we're gonna go visit the village of La Libertad. So we've done this a couple of times now, but um, one of the things that's actually rather safe to do here is actually hitchhiking. So if a bus doesn't come, we're gonna be sticking our thumb out and hopefully grabbing someone with the ute so we can just jump in the back. Oh, 
far we got to stop, but uh, he wasn't going to the place we're going to. All right, we got a bus. We got a bus instead. Enjoying the last day in the country, we walked around the town of La Libertad, trying to soak in as much of this rich culture as we could. The upshot of a lack of tourists meant that we appreciated the local markets, coastal views, and the restaurants. I think the thing that I've liked the most about El Salvador would probably be the fact that all the people have been really nice and really helpful. When we first landed in um, El Salvador, everyone, like, we couldn't find the right bus, we had so much trouble getting to the accommodation and about a dozen people ended up actually helping us out to get there. And I think that sense of like, I don't know, kindness and compassion for others is something that I've really warmed to. So, Overall, I mean, like, I've absolutely loved the nature, but the people have surprised me a lot and I've really enjoyed it. Our final hours, though, really summarize how we felt throughout this trip. On the way to the airport, our Uber broke down halfway there. And in the dark, with no signal, we did what most parents would fear. Nothing quite like hitchhiking in one of the world's most dangerous countries. Well, it used to be the world's most dangerous country. Now it's the world's most friendliest. It started crazy to ending crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> we, actually, we actually made it to the airport. Oh, you absolute legend. At the beginning of this trip, we were searching for the spirit of El Salvador. But we can't quite put our finger on it. However, it was by letting go and putting our trust in the unknown that we were won over by the chaos of the place and the kindness of the people. I don't know why I'm so stressed out. I just... May the best winner win. I got my first mountain! <laughs> <laughs>